Hello, it's Jimmy here already. So I have here a Ford Ranger here to look at. It's come down from a few hours away or so uh, because it's been to a Ford dealership and spent some time there uh, trying to diagnose a DPF issue. But from what the customer here is telling me, they said that they could not figure out what the fault is and he had to pay for a diagnosis. But what they're saying is he would need to pay for a fair few hours more diagnosis before they can go any further on the matter. So. Uh, he's just ended up taking it back from them and he's come to see me see if I can sort it out. Okay, so we get the diagnostic machine plugged in. Get the ignition turned on. 73,000 miles. Start it up. See what we're looking at. Engine management light on. I don't think this has got any sort of screen that gives any sort of errors, but looks like that's what we're looking at there. Okay. Set up the diagnostic. I'm going to use this Launch UK Euro Tab 3 and we'll do diagnostic. High speed scan. Right, we've got six faults. So it's not going to be a straightforward on it by the looks of it if we've got six faults. Okay, we've got glow plug one, two, three, glow plug control module, exhaust gas, temperature sensor, circuit, high, particulate filter restriction, sort of accumulation. So it's got a block DPF and an exhaust gas temperature sensor, which is these two faults here are going to be what we need to fix to get the engine light off and the vehicle working in order. Uh, normally I would say you'd need the glow plugs working as well. Uh, but because this uses a vaporizer system, I know from experience now that the, the DPF will still work. It is advised to get these done, which I probably will do as well. But at the moment we're going to concentrate on these two faults. Okay, so it's going to set up some ramps. Okay, now before we get on the ramps and go under, we're going to have a look at some live data. Okay, so we want to look at the temp, temperature sensors. Let's have a look. Exhaust gas temperature sensor. Voltage, voltage. Voltage. Uh, right, so it looks like that's all we have there. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got five volts on the two of these sensors. Uh, number number three, this is bank one, sensor three, basically, number 13. That looks like it's given a, some sort of reading. We can't see the actual temperature of these ones, just the voltage. Let's give it a rev, see if that increases. seem to be. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's increasing now. Okay, so this sensor for definite is not moving whatsoever. Um, I think both of these sensors are a little bit high, but yeah, let's go underneath and have a look. Okay, there we've got it on the ramps. Okay, just getting under here. And I can see there straight away. That wasn't hard to find now, was it? Took me a whole lot, whole load of uh, two seconds to find that. Definitely got a break in that wire for one reason or another. I don't know if it's been chewed on or what. That's uh, the blue one, so that'd be. I think that's sensor one. Uh, the green one here. Get the bend, is that okay? Yep. Right, oh, we've got another broken wire here. Oh, now, unfortunately, 
this one is right on the end of the cable so I don't think I'll be able to repair that ok so I've now taken out this exhaust gas temperature sensor used a torch there to get some heat on that ok so now I've got the green one out and I've got the blue one out so I was able to get a brand new replacement sensor for that one but this green one is not available at the moment so I'm gonna try and see if there's some sort of bodge I can do I've tried to sort of put a solder on that but what's end up happening here is, is the whole cables end up coming out just like that so that's not gonna work so because this car has come from a few hours away he's just sitting around waiting for me to fix it of course I would like to get a brand new one of these but I can't get hold of it so I think I've got a bit of an idea what I can do temporarily I haven't got my cowboy hat with me um, today but we're gonna have to do something like that just to get it working I think so seeing as I've got a replacement for this one what I'm gonna do is chop this where it's broken and try to use this end of the sensor connected to that cable okay so what I've done is soldered the end of this to the other cable now I'm just going to heat shrink it in so what I've done is I've used the plug and the cable from the green wire and I've used the sensor from the end of the blue one so we've made one good sensor here and we've got a replacement sensor for that okay so that's the green cable attached and the blue cable is attached over there there we go okay let's get back inside give it a few revs and see if we've got movement we can see we've got a little bit of movement all already there okay so that looks like they are now working what we can do now is go back and we'll uh, delete some of these codes for the exhaust temperature sensors and just make sure that the circuit faults are not coming back for those so like I said we're gonna ignore these glow plug faults for a minute and we're just concentrating on these okay so we're clearing the fault now with the engine running for a few minutes we check again or a minute or so if we have a circuit fault there it should pop straight back up okay so we've got now just to block DPF code and uh, let's go to the data stream for that 172% 17 millibars there or hectopascals at idle so we want to see that getting down to sort of 4 to 8 millibars around that range so now what I'm doing is activating this vaporizer fuel pump hear that ticking just to confirm that's working so what I've done is I've activated that here with the scan tool to prime up the vaporizer now here is the vaporizer itself I'm gonna test that that is not blocked as well so I'm gonna to need to open this fuel line here so if we take this clip off and remove the fuel hose here might get a bit of drippage there we go I hate getting diesel on my hands because it stinks okay so it looks like we haven't got a blockage but we've got a very partially blocked one because there's some movement on there so we'll try and do a little bit of a repair on that as well I'm gonna heat that up Okay, now I've got this nozzle attached to there and what I'm doing is injecting this cleaning fluid into the DPF and it is that kit from Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid and the gun so spraying the fluid in alone hasn't fixed the problem so what I'm doing is putting some heat on here and I'm gonna blow it through with the airline once we've burned the carbon off
Okay, so I've heated that up and then we've put the airline through it at 130 psi. Uh, let's check it now, see if we've got movement. And that's how it should be. No restriction in the flow. Okay, so I'm back in the van or truck, whatever you call it, uh, at the moment. And after we've injected the DPF cleaning fluid in, we have now got it down to six millibars. We have only just had it running a minute or so actually, but it's already come down the pressure. Let's hold it up. 3000 RPM. We have around about 100 millibars that will come down. And there we go, it's coming down from 100 down to 70, 78 there. down a little bit and we're down around sort of 50 to 60 millibars and idle 7 millibars so we're going to take it on a drive and it's moving around a bit sort of 5.8 millibars of pressure there okay so we've had a test drive of four or five miles and we have sort of 7.8 or set to 8 millibars of pressure uh, 50 millibars of pressure at uh, 3000 RPM. We've got the soot cal calculations reset to zero and the way we've done that is by special functions, powertrain control modules and particle filter values reset over here. Now the vehicle is all good to go and the faults that we have left here are the glow plugs cylinder 1, 2 and 3 I'm not going to have time to do those today, so you might see it on another video, but for now the vehicle will work with these three glow plugs not running. So that's it, Ford Ranger is now all finished, and I'll see you on the next video.